Welcome to another video from the Gars Museum. On the 9th of June 1945, the tank crews of the Guards Armoured Division handed back their tanks and went back to being infantry. For being Guards, this sad event was not going to pass without ceremony, and so a farewell to armour parade was held with Field Marshal Montgomery presiding. In this video, I'll look at the preparations for the parade and some great images of the event itself. The division had been formed in 1941 when it was realised that Britain needed more tank units to defeat the panzers of the German army. The guards had fallen as a division in the First World War and so the concept of forming a division was logical. However, converting infantry soldiers from the five regiments of foot guards into tank crews was no mean feat. If nothing else, guardsmen, who were known for their height, were probably the least logical choice to fit into the cramped tanks of the day. Having landed in France in June 1944, they fought hundreds of miles through Normandy, Belgium and Holland before ending the war deep in Germany. But no sooner had the war ended than rumours circulated that the division and the separate 6th Guards Tank Brigade would be losing their tanks. As newcomers to armoured warfare, and with 300 years of history behind them as infantry, perhaps this was not unexpected. Rotenburg Airfield in Germany was chosen as a venue for the final parade. It was a large open space with room to assemble the rows of tanks, armoured cars and self-propelled guns of the division. Plus it had a ridge that created a horizon that was to play a key part in the ceremony. The one problem was that like many Luftwaffe airfields, it was littered with aircraft wrecks and bomb craters. Sappers, using labour supplied by prisoners of war, not only cleared the site, but built a saluting stand and a roofed enclosure for the guests. The crews had developed a deep affection for their tanks no doubt mixed with curses at the inevitable mechanical issues, and many had been named. In the book, The History of the Guards Armoured Division, it states, To the vast majority of those who had nursed them, lived with them, and fought with them, their relationship had taken on an almost human aspect. It must have been very moving to strip the vehicles of the photos, good luck charms, and personal items that made them home for a year. The tanks were also stripped of machine guns and extra equipment that had been hung on them. Many had extra tracks welded on for protection, which also had to be cut off. They were then painted grey, using paint which had been acquired from the German Navy when the guards occupied the port of Cuxhaven. The hatches, which were open for the parade, were then painted white, and the ends of the 75mm gun barrels were polished bare metal. Even the radio aerials were decorated. One guardsman, who had no doubt hoped for some rest with the war over, commented, Peace has fair come on us with a vengeance. On the morning of the parade, the Shermans, 17-pounder Sherman Fireflies and Cromwells, lined up on the airfield. Behind them were the armoured cars of the Household Cavalry and vehicles from other units leaving the division. Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery and the other VIPs arrived by air, landing on a small strip as the tanks were taking up most of the airfield. Wearing his famous tank beret, he inspected the ranks of vehicles from a half-track while the crews stood to attention. The VIPs watched the rest of the parade from the viewing stand. In a pall of blue smoke, the tanks started up every crew no doubt relieved their worn out tanks had not broken down and then drove past the viewing stand. As they did so the commander saluted from the turret and the gun traversed. Then with the gun reversed to point backwards in salute the tanks disappeared over the ridge. The mass bands of the household regiments were playing old Lang Syne. It was a wonderful display and a poignant moment. While the tanks parked and the crews dismounted, the bands wheeled and moved to the top of the ridge. Then, with their regimental marches playing, the crews marched back over the ridge, this time as foot soldiers, but still in their tanker berets. 
Marching with typical skill across the ruts left by their own tanks, they formed up in the arena area. The Gars division, as it now was, was called to attention and when God Save the King was played, the formal ceremony was over. Montgomery, a master at talking to soldiers in this way, called the men to gather round and address them. I welcome you back as infantry, he said. You can look back with pride on your excursion into the realms of armoured warfare, and the experience there gained will always be valuable to you. He also congratulated General Adair on his leadership of the division from its formation to its end. You owe more to him than you can ever repay, he said. When he finished speaking, an almighty cheer went up, and then the men were dismissed, and the event was over. Most of the men, however, were soon back to work, readying the tanks for the eventual handover. They were to be driven to a depot in Hamburg, where the crews would say goodbye to them for the last time. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel, where we'll be exploring more history and delving into our collection in further videos. You can also check out our new podcast series on Buzzsprout, Bearskins, Bayonets and Bravery, Notes from the Gars Museum. Thank you very much.